Hi, and welcome to tonight's study in the book of Proverbs. Uh, we're going to start chapter 4 this evening with an admonition to follow righteousness and to avoid wickedness. Um, chapter 4, verse 1 says, Listen, children, to a father's instruction, and pay attention so that you may gain discernment. Because I give you good instruction, do not forsake, forsake my teaching. When I was a son to my father, a tender only child before my mother, he taught me, and he said to me, Let your heart lay hold of my words. Keep my commands so that you will live. Verse 5 says, Acquire wisdom, acquire understanding. Do not forget and do not turn aside from the words I speak. Do not forsake wisdom, and she will protect you. Love her, and she will guard you. Now, there's patterns in the book that I'm sure you're starting to pick up. You have wisdom and understanding um, brought up in probably every chapter so far. And hold on to good with all your heart. Verse 7 says, wisdom is supreme. So acquire wisdom, and whatever you acquire, acquire understanding. And I couldn't help but think that this might be Solomon lamenting about having so much wisdom, but maybe lacking the understanding to stay the course and not marry a thousand women and multiply horses and chariots and all the things that even though he had the wisdom to know we're, we're wrong, he didn't have the understanding to, to realize that he had to make the wise decisions on a day-to-day -day basis, just like us. I mean, there's a reason why the, you know, the, even the heroes of the Bible are so fallible, so that we can't read the Bible and go, oh, I just have to be like Solomon and I'll be cool. Like, if you're just like Solomon, you're messing up because he messed up and he was the wisest man ever. Verse 8 says, Esteem her highly, and she will exalt you. She will honor you if you embrace her. She will place a fair garland on your head. She will bestow a beautiful crown on you. And another part of the pattern of this book is that you wear righteousness. That people, when, when you are gathering wisdom and understanding and, and, and trying to lead a righteous life, that people see that, that it's like you're, you're clothed in that. And we looked at it a couple of weeks ago, that the clothes actually do make the man if you're clothed with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Verse 10 says, Listen, my child, and accept my words, so that the years of your life will be many. I will guide you in the way of wisdom, and I will lead you in upright paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hampered, and when you run, you will not stumble. Hold on to instruction. Do not let it go. Protect it, because it is your life. I'm going to read that again. Hold on to instruction. Do not let it go. Protect it, because it is your life. And the best instruction in the world comes from, not me, but from the book that I'm teaching. The Bible. Um, verse 14 says, Do not enter the path of the wicked or walk in the way of those who are evil. Avoid it. Do not go on it. Turn away from it and go on. For they cannot sleep unless they cause harm. They are robbed of sleep until they make someone stumble. For they eat bread gained from wickedness and drink wine obtained from violence. And that is an awesome description of evil people. And we all know people like that in our lives. And if you see a little bit of yourself while we're reading this, um, and you're a believer, the Holy Spirit will help you work through that. Verse 18 says, But the path of the righteous is like the bright morning light growing brighter and brighter until full day. The way of the wicked is like gloomy darkness. They do not know what causes them to stumble. And here's another pattern, and that is 
contrasting the ways of the wicked with the ways of the righteous. Verse 20 says, My child, pay attention to my words. Listen attentively to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your sight. Guard them within your heart. For they are, they are life to those who find them, and healing to one's entire body. Guard your heart with all vigilance, for from it are the sources of life. Amen. Remove perverse speech from your mouth. Keep devious talk far from your lips. And Paul says in 2 Timothy 2, verses 22 and 23, but keep away from youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faithfulness, love, and peace in company with others who call on the Lord from a pure heart. But reject foolish and ignorant controversies because you know they breed infighting. And it's the same old song, teach your children well. And then Solomon goes on to teach, verse 25, Let your eyes look directly in front of you, and let your gaze look straight before you. Make the path for your feet level, so that all your ways may be established. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Turn yourself away from evil. So you want to stay on that straight path, but then when evil jumps in front of you, then you want to steer clear. If it looks and smells like it could be evil, just steer clear. Um, stay in those paths of righteousness that we talked about a couple weeks ago, that the shepherds would lead the sheep in, in Psalm 23. So, in closing, how are we doing with our homework so far, like week to week? Um, are you keeping a journal? You know, how about where the rubber meets the road? If you're keeping a journal, but you're not doing anything actively, then it's, you know, you're not doing it there. And that's the most important place. You know, are we helping others with what God has given us? Are we withholding when our neighbor needs something and we have what he needs? And one of the problems is, is that you might have it, and they might not know that you have it, so sometimes you need to take it to them. You know, we tend to sit there and go, well, if he knocks on my door in the middle of the night, like in the, in the parable, then I'll give him bread. Well, no. Sometimes you have to look around and say, this person is in need, and you need to provide for that need. You know, how about providing a Bible for somebody that could be um, something simple. Hopefully the Lord has either guided you to do that or is guiding you to do that. Stick with it. And your homework this week is just to go into your journal and and start to look at where you are in this whole process. Is, is the book of Proverbs helping you in your, your walk with Christ? Until next week, God bless you.